All right. I think we'll get started here. Uh, so I'll start out by saying welcome to everyone and good morning. I'm Alex Him, the Chief of Staff for the Foundation for Food and Agriculture Research, or FAR, as we call ourselves. And I'm thrilled to welcome you today to the 2024 Annual Public Conversation. A quick housekeeping note for everyone's awareness, this webinar is being recorded. So next on to the agenda, today we'll hear from the Vice Chair of the FAR Board, Dr. Doug Bueller. After that, we'll see a, a video message that was recorded by USDA Secretary Tom Vilsack, specifically for today's event. After that, our Executive Director, Dr. Sahara Moon Chapadin, will provide remarks about how we're celebrating FAR's 10th anniversary, as well as FAR's exciting future. And next, we will hold the public comment session and conclude by taking questions during a Q&A. Before we hear from Dr. Bueller, we're going to play a short video highlighting some FAR-funded research in Colorado. Uh, and we share this with a special thanks to our investment bank, Goldman Sachs, for choosing to highlight FAR and our research in this video. Agriculture is fundamental to life. It feeds us, it clothes us. If we want to help this world and move beyond the problems that we're facing, we need to think bigger and we need to think broader. The Foundation for Food and Agriculture Research, or FAR, builds public-private partnerships to support bold food and agriculture research to deliver more sustainable, nutritious food. We bring researchers together with companies and foundations that can fund that research. In the first 10 years of FAR's existence, we have awarded over 360 grants. I study diseases of plants and how to make plants resist those diseases. Pathogens affect every crop on the planet. The problem now is that climate change is exacerbating the situation, and that's where FAR has helped us step in the FAR grant enables us to translate what we learn in the lab to the farmers who will use it to grow healthier crops. A lot of the agricultural practices we've used for generations have been destroying soil, and so my research project is to try to understand regenerative practices that improve soil health. Engaging farmers is really important because what we do in the lab might not always translate perfectly out in the field. FAR allows me the time to meet with farmers and understand their needs on the ground. If we invest in research, we can address a changing climate to deliver the foods that we need and to really be a force of good in our environment, in our community, and in our world. Well, good morning. I hope you enjoyed that brief video uh, about FAR. We're very pleased that uh, Goldman Sachs chose uh, to feature us. Uh, I'm Doug Bueller. Uh, I'm Associate Vice President for Research at Michigan State University, and it's my great pleasure to serve as the Vice Chair of the FAR Board of Directors. On behalf of the Board, welcome to our 10th Annual Public Conversation. It's wonderful to have you all with us here today as we celebrate our 10th anniversary. For those of you less familiar with FAR, Congress established FAR in the 2014 Farm Bill to build public-private partnerships that fund bold research addressing big food and agricultural challenges. The legislation provided $200 million to be matched by non-federal partners to support public agriculture research, fill knowledge gaps, and complement the United States Department of Agriculture's research agenda. At that point, FAR had a 15-member board, no staff, no physical office, no bylaws, no procedure. Um, I was there, it was quite an incredible time and, and to still be here today is, is, is a great pleasure for me personally. The board quickly moved to hire our first executive director, Dr. Sally Rocky, in the fall of 2015. That same year, FAR launched its first two programs, the New Innovators Award and the Rapid Outcomes from Agricultural Research or ROAR program. The New Innovators Award provides early career scientists with invested needed to help them get their research off to a fast start without the pressure of dealing with high um, turndown funding sources. To date, 
The program has supported 72 young faculty in the sciences. The second program, ROAR, deploys urgent funding in response to emerging or unanticipated threats to the nation's food supply and agricultural systems. For example, ROAR has funded research to address the need for an avian swine fever vaccine and explored resistance genes to protect wheat from costly pests. Owing to our early successes, Congress appropriated an additional $185 million to FAR in the 2018 Farm Bill. FAR uses, uses several funding mechanisms, direct funding, competitive proposals, prizes, and consortia. FAR has successfully established many consortia that bring key stakeholders from across the food and agricultural industry to co-invest in and deploy mutually beneficial research. To date, FAR has either created or is a key member, funder and member of 10 consortia. Additionally, FAR has hosted approximately 45 convening events, leveraging public investment to bring private knowledge and networks together to solve challenges facing food and agriculture. Today, FAR is a pioneering leader in food and, agri in food and agriculture research. Since its creation, the foundation has grown to nearly 50 staff members, and 20 appointed board members along with five ex officio board members. Our successes would not be possible without the thoughtful and collaborative work of our board of directors, many of whom have joined us on this webinar today. I wanna to thank all of you for your insights, time, and many contributions to FAR. It's amazing to look back to see how far the foundation has come over the past 10 years. To date, FAR has awarded 398 grants Funded with, funded with over 550 partners. Those partners are across the United States and in 15 other countries. These grants invest a total of 70, $775 million into critical food and agriculture research. FAR matches every federal dollar with at least a dollar from non-federal sources. On average, the foundation garners $1.40 for every federal dollar allocated delivering a powerful return on taxpayer investment. Because of FAR's unique model, Congress provided funding for FAR in the 2018 Farm Bill Extension, which was passed in late 2023. This was the first time that funding was provided to programs such as FAR, which are known as orphan programs. The additional $37 million that we received allowed FAR to continue holding our convening events, funding vital research, and supporting scientific workforce development. As I mentioned earlier, FAR and the USDA have worked closely since the creation of the foundation. As FAR as cr was, was created to complement USDA's research agenda, the two organizations have, co have coordinated over the years to co-develop innovative programs and projects, convene private sector and advance audacious food and agriculture research. As I wrap up, it's my honor to introduce Secretary Tom Vilsack, the 30sec 32nd Secretary of Agriculture of the United States. Throughout his career, he has advocated for America's farmers and helped provide a safe, efficient, and nutritious food supply for the American people. Thank you again for providing remarks today, Secretary Vilsack. Good morning, everyone. It's an honor to speak to you today as we celebrate the 10th anniversary of the Foundation for Food and Agriculture Research. Looking back over the last decade of FAR, we've witnessed innovation, collaboration, and an unwavering commitment to addressing some of the most pressing challenges in agriculture and food security. Today, we recognize not only this milestone for FAR, but the profound impact this organization has had on our agricultural landscape. The USDA is proud to have partnered with FAR on numerous projects that are helping to ensure a resilient and sustainable food system for generations to come. Together, we collaborated on the historic Aim for Climate Summit in Washington, D.C. in May of 2023, convening partners to increase and accelerate support for agriculture and food systems innovation for climate action. The summit included the second Aim for Climate Ministerial the largest known convening of ministers focused on climate smart agriculture and food system transformation. At the summit, we announced that Aim for Climate Partners generated more than $13 billion in increased investments in climate smart ag and food systems innovation. The momentum from the summit carried on to COP28, 
where we announced a total of $17 billion in increased investments. And speaking of COP, it was at COP27 that I announced $5 million to establish the Efficient Fertilizer Consortium. Led by FAR, the consortium is conducting research to advance efficient, environmentally beneficial, and cost-effective fertilizers and management practices. Most recently, USDA partnered with FAR to host the Agri-Food Innovation Symposium in Washington, D.C. The symposium featured showcases and talks on transformative scientific solutions made possible by USDA investments to enhance collective efforts towards a more nutritious, sustainable, and equitable agri-food system. During this event, I announced a global challenge led by USDA and FAR to advance scientific research that will produce major breakthroughs for nutrition security while mitigating climate smart impacts and advancing equity for underserved communities. The Nourishing Next Generation Agri-Food Breakthroughs Innovation Challenge will fund transdisciplinary teams led by early career scientists to catalyze new R&D that will simultaneously tackle our most important societal challenges. Our awards are expected to be announced on September 30th. Our shared vision for a robust agricultural sector has led to research that not only advances our scientific understanding, but also delivers practical solutions to farmers and communities across the nation. Now, as we look into the future, the partnership between USDA and FAR will continue to play a critical role. We're faced with unprecedented challenges, growing populations, changing climates, and evolving food demands. But with partners like FAR, I'm confident we will rise to meet these challenges, ensuring that our food system remains secure, sustainable, and resilient. So thank you, FAR, for a decade of extraordinary service and partnership, and to everyone here today for your continued dedication to advancing agriculture. Together, we will keep pushing the boundaries of what is possible to build a brighter and more sustainable future for all. Good morning. My name is Sahara Moon Chapotin. I'm FAR's Executive Director, and I'm thrilled to have so many of you join us virtually. Throughout the year, we've been highlighting testimonials from our grantees, fellows, and farmers involved in FAR-funded research. You can view these profiles provided by our stakeholders on the Our Impact page of our website to hear directly from them about how our research is having an impact. For example, Dr. Lee Archer is a new innovator awardee. She is exploring species selection for low input fruit and nut trees. She shared how her FAR funded research will maximize ecosystem health while being economically viable for organic farmers. She said, the award has given me the opportunity to establish field trials, which can be used for decades. We are honored to support this type of innovative research and to support scientific workforce development, which is truly a cornerstone of FAR's mission. Since FAR's creation a decade ago, the food and agriculture landscape has shifted. In recognition of our need to keep FAR's research current, we spent most of 2023 meeting with the research community, with food and agriculture businesses, and with producer organizations to better understand how FAR can meet their needs. As a result of this process, we created our research strategy and we identified four key research priority areas, agroecosystems, production systems, healthy food systems, and the scientific workforce. In response to stakeholder feedback, our priority areas will create more coordination between research themes and ensure our work drives towards impacts. I'm so grateful to everyone who contributed to the development of our research strategy and our resulting priority areas by submitting their valuable feedback through our public portal or during one of our focus group sessions or many consultative discussions. According to the USDA Economic Research Service, every dollar spent on public agricultural research provides $20 in US economic benefits. Over the years, we have heard from our partners about the value FAR brings due to our unique public-private partnership model. When FAR was created, Congress mandated that we match every federal dollar we allocate to research with a dollar from a non-federal source. Our partners are helping us over-deliver on this mandate, on average providing $1.40 for every dollar we spend on research. 
This match amplifies the federal funding and allows us to tackle some of the most pressing challenges in food and agriculture. FAR often works through establishing consortia of funders. These bring stakeholders together from across an industry or a value chain to fund research and generate pre-competitive solutions to common challenges. This year, we commissioned an external evaluation of our consortia models to ensure we are meeting our stakeholders' needs and to strengthen our approach. The report found that our partners appreciate the ability to leverage match funds. They appreciate the ability to collaborate with diverse stakeholders and contribute to high quality research that addresses meaningful large issues. The evaluation also identified areas for improvement, such as ex expediting certain review processes, expanding collaboration opportunities, and developing standard operating procedures for the management of our consortia. We will be working closely with our consortium members over the coming months to implement some new strategies to better meet their needs and expectations. A recent consortium we launched is the Efficient Fertilizer Consortium. FAR received 4.45 million from the U.S. Department of Agriculture and the Department of State as part of the United States government's support of the Global Fertilizer Challenge to advance efficient, environmentally beneficial, and cost-effective fertilizers and management practices. The research that this consortium will do aims to increase soil health, decrease input costs for farmers, reduce emissions, and improve global food security. By leveraging our partner network, FAR was able to establish the Efficient Fertilizer Consortium with eight partners on board so far. And with some additional partners expected to join, we are poised to more than double the federal investment, creating a powerful return on taxpayer investment. This year, we are also evaluating our Rapid Outcomes from Agricultural Research, or ROAR program. ROAR deploys urgent funding to address emerging pests or pathogens threatening the nation's food supply or agriculture systems. As an example of this program's impact, a recent ROAR grant addressed the emergence of corn tar spot, a damaging corn disease that appeared in the U.S. in 2016. A University of Florida research team identified mitigation strategies and disseminated findings to growers and the scientific community and through the University of Florida Extension Network and is working to disseminate the information further through local extension channels. This ROAR grant is a great example of one of the many ways that FAR research is generating impacts to support farmer resilience. ROAR's ability to rapidly respond to emerging challenges by providing one-year funding until longer-term funding can be secured helps the scientific community develop early mitigation strategies that protect farmers, producers, and consumers. With the rise of highly pathogenic avian influenza, or HPAI, and its spread into cattle this year, we reminded our research community about the ROAR program and its unique ability to support proposals related to HPAI response, prevention, and mitigation. In recent weeks, we've received numerous ROAR applications focused on HPAI and are actively reviewing these proposals. As you can see, we are incorporating monitoring, evaluation, and learning as an integral part of our grant-making process as we continue implementing our new research strategy. The consortium models and ROAR evaluations are one piece of this process, and we'll be launching several other FAR program evaluations in the coming months. Earlier this year, we hired a monitoring evaluation and learning officer to guide this work and to integrate reporting systems into our grant structure so that our grantees better understand what is expected of them and we can evaluate and learn from the research we are funding. We are also evaluating our Seeding Solutions Program in 2025. This evaluation will help ensure that the research we fund through the Signature Program aligns with the new research strategy and will inform improvements in overall program structure. As a result, Seeding Solutions will not accept applications in 2025 while this evaluation is underway. However, the 2024 applications are under review and awardees will be notified soon. We recently released our 2023 impact report that gives an overview of FAR's activities and impact. It provides additional details about the consortium model evaluation, as well as outcomes from FAR funded research grants that ended in 2023. These range from decision tools to guide swine producers through adopting strategies to reduce swine mortality, 
high fiber wheat varieties that are now being used in everyday products, and expanded tribal food sovereignty. To read the full report, including additional research outcomes, you can visit the impact page of our website. But our learning doesn't stop with our programs. We always seek to improve our grant making operations. This summer, we launched our second annual grants customer satisfaction survey to ensure we are meeting the needs of our grantees and updating our processes as necessary. The survey found that respondents were pleased by some of the changes we made over the last year, including streamlining the grant section of FAR's website, updating the budget template, and improving response times from the grants management team. Those were all improvements that surfaced from last year's survey. Survey respondents also identified several areas where FAR can continue to improve. Over the coming months, we'll take this into consideration by improving the usability of our grants management system, further simplifying the budget template to ease administrative burdens, and streamlining annual disbursements to avoid payment delays. Looking back on this year, I want to tell you about a very exciting new program. FAR was thrilled to partner with the USDA on the USDA FAR Innovation Challenge, announced by Secretary Vilsack in June during the Agri-Food Innovation Symposium, which we help support. This unique funding opportunity seeks to spark high-risk, high-reward research through innovations at the intersection of nutrition security, equity and justice, and climate-smart agriculture. This opportunity focused on the next generation of research and emphasized providing resources to support highly creative and highly promising early career researchers. We received nearly 100 applications for this funding opportunity and will announce the awardees very soon on September 30th. In 2023, we had our most impactful programming year ever. We awarded 74 grants investing over 60 million in Farm Bill funding and leveraging an additional 85 million in matching funds from our partners. This allowed us to invest a total of $145 million into bold food and agriculture research. And then late last year, we were thrilled to be included in the 2018 Farm Bill extension. Thanks to this additional funding, we have been busy this year hosting 11 convening events to date to collaboratively, collaboratively define unexplored research areas where joint investment will provide actionable results. We've been forging partnerships and making new research investments aligned with our new strategy. Heading into next year, FAR is continuing to formulate new consortia. We are defining research priorities with our partners and preparing new agreements. Our ability to make significant funding commitments to new projects, however, will depend on FAR receiving funding in the upcoming Farm Bill. As we look to the future, FAR is actively investing in our greatest asset, our staff, as well as our relationships with partners and grantees. We maintain operational reserves to continue managing and overseeing our existing multi-year research investments and to ensure they continue to yield impact. We are continuing to track the impact of the research and deploy the outputs to stakeholders who can adopt and disseminate them. FAR could not do what it does without the support of each and every partner. We are grateful for this community's trust and continued collaboration. I am invigorated by the responses we have received to our open calls for research proposals this year and the feedback on our research strategy. I truly believe that together we can go far. Thank you. Thank you, Saruman. All right. Now it's time for our public comment period. So I will introduce each speaker one by one. And when I call your name, if you're in attendance, we will unmute you so you can read your comment. And for those who did not submit comments ahead of time, don't worry, we will have a Q&A session after this. So start thinking about your questions now. Uh, so starting with our first commenter, we have Chuck from the Biochar Policy Project. Can you hear me? You can. Do you hear me? Yeah, okay, good. I'm Chuck Hasselbrook uh, with the Biochar Policy Project, which is a project of the National Center for Appropriate Technology. Um, we appreciate the work that FAR has done on biochar. 
and particularly uh, biochar's role in the convening on biochar research and commercialization. It was a very helpful event that brought together key stakeholders and players in biochar research and development. Um, but as far as uh, involvement in biochar research is critical. And I say that because of a couple of reasons, but because peer-reviewed analysis indicates that biochar of all agricultural strategies probably has the greatest potential to remove carbon from the atmosphere and sequester it in soil. Um, and it has agronomic benefits. Um, biochar use uh, has been demonstrated uh, if you use the right kind of biochar, appropriately designed biochar to enhance soil health, uh, to improve soil water holding capacity, improve soil fertility, um, and improve productivity of soil. Uh, but the challenge with biochar is that the research results have been inconsistent. And it's not surprising that they're inconsistent because there are many different types of biochar, depending on what you produce it from. You know, it's produced by heating biomass in the absence of oxygen. The feedstock you use and the temperature at which you process it uh, will determine its characteristics, and that will determine its impacts in soil. Um, and because of so, so right now the big challenge with biochar is we know it can do very favorable things, both climatically and agronomically. But what we don't know right now is if we take a particular type of biochar in a particular soil and set of circumstances, what impact that biochar is going to have there. And so there is a critical need for coordinated research to take a common set of representative biochar types and test them in varied locations across uh, the country uh, to determine um, their impacts on uh, various measures of uh, effects on greenhouse gases and various agronomic uh, measures. Um, I think FAR can have a critical role to play and helping bring that kind of coordinated biochar uh, research about. Um, you know, you've already started that process and been helpful um, by initiating the convening on biochar research and commercialization. Um, and we certainly look forward to working with bio, biochar with, with FAR in the future and urge you to continue to focus on ways to close the critical knowledge gaps on biochar. So thank you for inviting me to speak. I appreciate it. Thanks uh, so much for those comments, and thanks for for noting the work that that we did uh, with you and other partners in the biochar space. Um, as you know, biochar is really an important part of our circular bioeconomy. Um, yet, as you say, so many solutions are are really site specific, and you've pointed to I think one of the things that FAR really can do well is bring different partners together across different regions to ensure that when we do research, it doesn't pertain to just one place, but we really can. Um, look across the, the landscape in the United States and, and ensure that solutions are adapted to the areas where they could be deployed. So thank you for highlighting that biochar work and the importance of biochar. Great, thank you for that. Our next comment will be from Daniel from the Breakthrough Institute. Daniel, if you're here with us, please feel free to make your comment. Thank you very much. I'm Dan Reto with the Breakthrough Institute, and we deeply appreciate the impact that FAR has had in greatly supplementing and advancing USDA's research mission since it was established in the 2014 Farm Bill, as Sahara Moon noted. In its first decade, FAR has support cutting edge research that addresses a wide range of different national as well as international challenges. And I wanted to note that this approach that FAR has taken has ensured that a substantial portion of its research, about 40% according to one estimate, has led to tools and practices being adopted quite rapidly by farmers and industry, which sets FAR apart from many other types of research agencies and operations. For example, FAR support for research at Cornell on heat stress and, and dairy cows um, led to the development of nutritional strategies that are now being adopted quite rapidly by farmers to help cows stay healthy and productive in the heat. In addition, um, as 
Chuck actually just noted and has been noted throughout this presentation, PAR has been highly effective at fostering collaboration really across the whole agricultural sector. Um, it's established, I believe, about 10 different consortia that unite stakeholders from not just industry and academia, but also government and nonprofits, philanthropies, really providing unique opportunities to, to support pre-competitive research. One example I'd like to highlight is the Greener Cattle Initiative, which has brought together major players like ADM, JBS, the Global Methane Hub, as well as folks across the dairy sector, such as the Innovation Center for US Dairy, to develop innovative solutions to cut enteric methane em emissions from, from cattle. This is not just a promising strategy to cut greenhouse gas emissions, but also a promising strategy to improve the productivity of both beef and dairy. And this initiative is funding path-breaking research across the country in places like Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and Illinois. But beyond collaboration, as Sahar Moon and others noted, FAR has been highly successful in just simply leveraging the federal funding that it receives in a unique way, securing about $1.40 and matching non-federal funds for every dollar in farm bill funding it receives. And I think in a, a time when U.S. agricultural research funding really struggles to keep pace with inflation and also is lagging behind spending by some of our global competitors, FAR's ability to more than double federal investments is particularly crucial. So as FAR enters its second decade, simply I wanted to highlight that it's really essential that Congress and the broader agricultural sector continue to support its work. FAR has a tremendous track record and uh, providing funding for it through the Farm Bill and continuing to provide support more broadly helps foster cross-sector collaboration and leveraging important non-federal funding. Thank you. Dan, thank you for those words and, and for your appreciation of what FAR does and, and for highlighting the, the really exciting research that has come out of our programs. Uh, it, it is always so meaningful to us when we hear from stakeholders that they value the research and the results of that research and that they see how it can benefit the U.S. food and agriculture system. Um, and you, as you noted, so much of our research touches both on sustainability and on productivity. And in, in my mind, those go hand in hand. So thanks for those comments. Thank you, Dan. Our next comment will be from Lisa with the Institute of Food Technologists. Lisa, please feel free to go ahead. Hello, can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Okay, great. So I'm Lisa Sanders from the Institute of Food Technologists, and we appreciate the opportunity to provide input on FAR's research program, their progress, um, and their strategies. Um, IFT is a global organization of over 11,000 members in more than 90 countries. Um, we're committed to advancing the science of food to ensure a sustainable, safe, nutritious, and accessible global food supply. We want to congratulate FAR on 10 very successful years of delivering solutions for food and agriculture challenges. FAR's interdisciplinary, high-risk, high-reward research approach with public-private partnerships has proven very effective in advancing food, agriculture, and nutrition. Uh, as Daniel mentioned, amid stagnant federal funding for much of food and ag research, FAR's growth um, and their ability to leverage public and private funds is truly commendable. So IFT has actually been very pleased to engage with FAR on several shared priority areas, such as food and nutrition security, workforce development, and public funding for research. Uh, this past year, FAR participated in IFT's roundtable on food science and technology solutions to increase the use of underutilized and biofortified crops, showcasing the Harvest for Health Challenge. And we believe addressing post-FarmGate food supply challenges is crucial for food and nutrition security, and so we look forward to further collaborations with FAR. 
We also applaud FAR's efforts in their scientific workforce development. At FIRST, which is IFT's annual meeting, Dr. Lakeisha Odom and Dr. Constance Jewa from FAR shared their workforce strengthening programs with our Council of Food Science Administrators and their insights on priorities of FAR and funding opportunities and workforce efforts were all invaluable. And we anticipate their participation in our expanded um, Council of Food Science Administrators meeting later in the fall, which will also include Nutrition Science Department administrators. Uh, we encourage FAR to continue addressing issues like food safety and quality essential for a resilient food system. Research on mitigating microbial and chemical contaminants, reuse of processing water, and addressing pesticide and veterinary residues and nanoparticles in the food supply are all pressing issues that need solutions. We suggest considering uh, food safety and resiliency as a future challenge area. IFT does look forward to continuing uh, our ongoing engagement and supporting FAR's efforts in tackling global food and agriculture challenges. We advocate for a systems approach as FAR uses involving all players along the food chain from farm to fork and beyond. And we thank you for this opportunity to provide input. Lisa, thank you so much for those comments and for the wonderful partnership that FAR has with IFT. I was thrilled that my team and I could be at the IFT meeting this summer in Chicago. Um, you've noted such important challenges that, that we need to address in, in food. And I'd say that's, that's really at the heart of why we've elevated healthy food systems as one of our priority areas. So we look forward to working with you and other stakeholders going forward to, to deliver on those priorities. All right, our next comment will be from Gordon with the Organic Farming Research Foundation. Or is yours, Gordon? Great, thank you. Appreciate this opportunity. Um, yeah, as uh, was said, I'm Gordon with the Organic Farming Research Foundation. And, you know, just want to start off with just words of appreciation for the opportunities to collaborate in the past with FAR um, related to just getting action-oriented resources into farmers' hands when it comes to adopting organic practices and um, organic systems in some cases. Um, and, you know, I just want to take this opportunity also to speak to the importance of renewing some interest um, in organic agriculture research uh, through FAR. We're really excited to see some of the collaborations with the Organic Center and um, some of those other opportunities that have been announced this year, but um, would just really encourage um, to bolster those through more and deeper um, collaborations moving forward. And I think one important thing to note of organic agricultural research is that it truly does help all farmers, not just organic certified producers. Um, and that can be, you know, practices as simple as cover crop usage and adopt like uh, adoption and research into the effects of those cover crops, um, which was started in the organic agriculture world um, to things more complex like integrated pest management. Um, a great example is the coddling moth pheromone disruption, um, which is a very simple IPM strategy that has been now utilized across both organic and conventional operators that has saved a lot of money and um, fuel and you know labor costs and a whole variety of things when it comes to just the application of different um, agrochemicals. Uh, so that's just like some great examples of how organic research really is usable by all operators. Um, but you know the converse can't really be said. Um, and you know when USDA funding for organic agriculture research makes up less than 2% of their total research budget, um, while the organic marketplace makes up 6% of the total food sales and uh, over 15% of the produce market. Um, you know, we see FAR as a really excellent opportunity to leverage some of the existing funding um, that FAR possesses to um, also leverage the like market leaders in the organic industry that is rapidly maturing um, and rapidly uh, becoming 
more complex than it was even five years ago um, and just expand the research portfolio into organic agricultural questions and topics that truly uh, touch on all of FAR's uh, research priorities. And um, related to that, I think, you know, as was said earlier, FAR's work in scientific workforce um, development is very encouraging and we would love to you know, see some collaboration and continued collaboration um, to help build the uh, industry's experience with organic agriculture research topics, because that is an area of rapid growth, um, but the workforce development hasn't been there in any systematic way. Um, so we just really need to work on some concerted effort to uh, continue developing that talent and research staff. Um, and yeah, just again, appreciate this opportunity to speak to FAR's um, research priorities and uh, the importance of it in this research ecosystem, as was said earlier, with decreasing public funds over the last two decades. Um, so we look forward to more collaborations in the future, and we'll uh, certainly be reaching out about those. Gordon, thank you for those comments and for highlighting FAR's partnership with the organic community. Uh, organic agriculture is, is a really critical part of our over agriculture system and, and FAR is thrilled to be able to work with you all and to advance research in those spaces. And I agree with you that research is, is very important and, and as you noted, can, can benefit all of agriculture. Thank you. Our last comment will be from Bob with the East Coast Shellfish Growers Association. Please go ahead, Bob. Let's see, as Bob may have dropped, we'll give him one moment. Okay, uh, last call, Bob, and then we'll move on to Q and A's. All right, uh, so we'll move on to our Q and A session here. Um, thank you for those who shared comments and also thank you to those who submitted your comments for any that we were not able to address today. Uh, the board of directors will review and provide feedback as appropriate. And so moving on to our Q&A session, uh, as mentioned, I'd like to invite you to ask questions using the chat feature uh, about FAR's priorities, our future direction, or any other questions you might have. Um, and for FAR board members who are in the audience today, uh, but not speaking yet, you please feel free to participate as well. And without further ado, we'll get started with some questions. Uh, the first question, uh, and I'll paraphrase here a bit, uh, is what role do you see consortia playing in FAR's future plans? So Doug or Sahar Moon, please feel free to speak to FAR's consortia. I think FAR's consortia are essential to how FAR works. They really provide an opportunity for us to address larger issues that cut across an industry with our stakeholders, often bringing together competitors, or as I said, players along a value chain. So while not every topic lends itself to a consortia, I have no doubt that we will continue to launch new consortia, especially with the feedback and insights that we gained from the evaluation that we conducted this past year. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward and excited to see how our partners will come together with us to really um, contribute to that greater common good through our consortia. And I would just add that given the mandate of FAR, consortia seem like should be one of the most one of the most important things that we do because of that's really what we've been asked to do from the original legislation that created the foundation. Great, thank you. Um, the next question is FAR prepared if there's no farm bill this year, and what is the state of funding going forward?
Well, we are an organization that plans. And so, yes, we, we are prepared for the, the various outcomes that, that the legislative calendar might deliver. Um, as I noted, we, we do have operational reserves and we can continue to um, manage and oversee the programs that we have launched already through their end dates. And um, we have some reserves going into next year for programming, but really our ability to, to really deliver against our research strategy in a significant way does depend on, on new farm bill funding. But as I noted, while we um, await the outcome of, of a farm bill, we are able to continue to host convenings, to bring our partners together and to make plans for future awards. Great, looking at another question here. Uh, there's a question about priority areas and how the priority areas uh, could lead to more projects that cut across different aspects of agriculture research and how far can help encourage that. That is precisely what we hope to accomplish through our shift to priority areas as we've brought together areas that previously were in different challenge areas together under the same umbrella, um, co-managed by a team. And I think even across those priority areas, there are so many cross-cutting issues that we really um, intend to and expect to deliver on research that is cross-cutting and interdisciplinary, because I don't think that we will be able to solve the challenges that are facing us through you know, narrow research that's focused just within one discipline. So that is exactly what we want to do as well. Great, thank you for that. Let's see, just fielding questions here. I have one. Uh, could you quantify how many projects are on hold due to lack of action on the farm bill? That's a good question. Um, it, I guess it, it depends a little bit what you think by on hold. At, at this time, none, because we did receive the extension funding last year that allowed us to continue programming this year. And I anticipate we will continue making grants early into next year. Um, it's the longer term, larger projects where we'd like to make significant commitments over multiple years that is challenging for FAR to do with the uncertainty of, of the farm bill still playing out. Thank you for that. Our next question is, will water issues become a priority area? Uh, water is absolutely a priority for FAR. Our agroecosystems work considers water as an essential resource within the agricultural landscape and considers how we sustainably manage water, how we use it, how water availability affects all other parts of agriculture. So I would say that absolutely water is critical, not just to our agroecosystems party area, but also to thinking about water and scarcity and availability and how we improve crops and how we manage animal production in light of water availability. All right. Next question here, and I'll summarize a little bit, uh, is about FAR's impact over the last decade. And is there anything that you found surprising or exciting about the impact that FAR has made over the last 10 years of operations? I wanna be funny and say, no, I'm not the least bit surprised because I had very high expectations for FAR. Um, but, but I think, I think what I find impressive is how far has been able to deliver across so many areas within agriculture has really had a very broad mandate and has delivered across that broad mandate. And I am, I am impressed. Um, and you know, much of this happened before my arrival at FAR with how many partners FAR has been able to bring to the table. 550 partners working with us is, is truly gratifying and really speaks to the value that, that FAR brings. When, our, um, when the commodity programs, the, the farmer funded research programs wanna partner with us and invest with us, that really reinforces to me that FAR is delivering research that benefits America's producers. So that also I think 
um, feels like an impressive outcome from our research. I don't know if I, I would say it's a surprise, but you know, have, having had the honor of being one of the inaugural board members to, to think about, you know, starting from absolute zero and being able to put together what has become a very impactful organization in such a short period of time. Um, and I think I've been pleasantly surprised with the type of consortia that has been able to, some of the partners that we've been able to bring to the table. Uh, clearly there's something different about FAR that has allowed some of these partners to come to the table that maybe haven't um, in some other um, some other places. And I think that's kind of the unique value of FAR compared to the other uh, more established uh, research programs that we've been developed to, or were created to complement. And I think we found kind of a unique role there that seems to be able to bring some things together uh, that have been difficult with the, the previously existing programs. Thank you for that. I think we're running now into our last question, uh, and it's a bit of a two-parter. Um, so first, I think can be summarized as, uh, how does FAR see its role in the implementation of research? Um, and then additionally, um, what does FAR see as its role in funding work in developing countries, if any? I think FAR has a big role to play in the implementation of research. I think some of that comes through by bringing partners to the table who will themselves be um, involved in commercializing the research and have relationships with farmers, we can ensure that the research we are doing is relevant and, and, and appropriate and will deliver the results that farmers need and that those partners by being present at the table from the beginning of the research will be the partners that will ensure that happens. I think that's part of it. I think every time we fund a research project, we need to think of the ultimate impact. How will this research reach a farmer? Are the players in place? Who needs to know about the outcomes of our research? So that's a very big part of it. With respect to, to research outside the United States, FAR has many partnerships with scientists all over the world. And, and I am just thrilled every time that we can bring that global science to bear on US agriculture. And that includes partnerships in developing countries. I try to keep in mind that our funding, um, at least the federal funding ultimately comes through the Farm Bill and we do have a mandate to deliver benefits to US food and agriculture. But of course, there are so many global issues that we can invest in together and through FAR's investments in addressing those global challenges, we can bring benefits much much more broadly to, to the entire globe, to countries in, in developing in, in Africa and Asia and in um, Europe and, and really all over the place. So I welcome those, those regional and global partnerships and I'm always looking for a way to maximize FAR's impact. Great. Well, I said that would be the last question, but we got one more great question. and We have a couple more minutes. So I think we'll end with this one. Um, it's related to FAR's work uh, in support of uh, avian influenza H5N1 research. Um, will FAR consider investing in this area to address the urgent need for a vaccine? Yeah, I think the questioner was also referring to the recent um, announcement we made about ROAR. ROAR is by definition a program that supports um, shorter term responses and, and really tees up researchers to then have the information and data they need to, protect, to go out for longer term research investments, sometimes by USDA and others. So um, vaccine development wasn't explicitly called for in that program, but FAR does invest in, in vaccine development across um, a range of different diseases and specifically around HPAI. We are coordinating very closely with the US Department of Agriculture and other researchers in this space and we'll be working with them to think about how we can best fund research and how we can ensure that we are um, complementing other research and not duplicating. So I would say that's an area under active discussion. Excellent. Well, thank you for that. Uh, we're coming up to our time stop. Uh, so we will end it there as promised. Um, I'd just like to say again, Thank you so much to everyone here today for your participation, um, everyone who asked a question, everyone who commented, and everyone who followed along with us. Um, and of course, thank you to Sahar Munin 
Doug, for your, your uh, thoughts and comments today. Uh, for everyone's awareness, a recording of this conversation will be available on our website for future reference. Um, so please feel free to reference that as needed. And with that, I'll just say thanks again and have a wonderful day.